Hello, this is a little video of the uh, forge burner uh, design that I'm working on and I've had a lot of requests for additional information on uh, on the burner that I've uh, posted pictures of. So this is the dual burner setup that I'm uh, developing right now for my uh, forge that's in the works. So um, I'll give you just a quick rundown. This is by no means a complete project. I still have a lot of work to do on it, but uh, uh, this is uh, the direction I'm going in. So just kind of go from the top. At the top here, I have a uh, just a quick disconnect uh, propane uh, valve with a with a uh, little shutoff valve right here, and just a quick disconnect. Um, so propane in, back out, and then into this needle valve. This is a Whitey. Um, Perkins is also a good brand. There's several good brands out there. Um, just a little more expensive than the, than the the cheap uh, Chinese ones that that are out there. But uh, the you know you could find these for about thirty bucks or so. Um, definitely worth the investment to get. Uh, real fine adjustment on on your propane coming in, on your pressure. So that coming in to a T, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, um, and then a four inch uh, pipe nipple here. And this is five inch right here, but you could you can make these pretty much any size you want just to get the spacing that you wanna have between your burners if you're going with a dual setup. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do. So here, this is just a galvanized quarter inch by quarter inch uh, pipe nipple. Uh, same thing on the left side. The only difference here is I took this to my belt grinder, smoothed it down. And I don't know if you get, how well you could see it here, but but on the edge there, I just ground uh, just the slightest bit of a flat there so that I could just get a nice center punch on there and put my MIG tip in there. Now, one of the things I did with the MIG tip is um, these are... Uh, uh, a Miller MIG tip 030 and uh, on a Miller it's a quarter inch 28 uh, tap so I just drilled and tapped here and then I shortened down uh, the length of the thread so I just barely go beyond the wall uh, of the pipe nipple okay and then I also took the uh, the other end and ground that down and uh, the reason I did that is so that when uh, when these pipe nipples will feed through this bell sideways, and here's one that I did before, ground it down flat to get a uh, a nice work area, punched it, cross drilled it. This is nine sixteenths, a little bit bigger than it needs to be, uh, but it's not a pressure fitting. So, um, and the reason I do it this way is that 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 pipe nipple will go through that reducing bell through that hole and then these are two inch or, or uh, um, inch and a half uh, electrical conduit connectors and I and uh, and and the reason I went this way is that when the quarter inch pipe nipple goes through and you aim your MIG nozzle down the bore with a pipe nipple going through this way, then you just simply take this uh, electrical conduit uh, piece here, thread it in, and that will jam down on this cross piece, on this on this pipe nipple, lock it into place, and so uh, you could do some tack welds on it if you like, but uh, um, in the testing that I've done, just hand tight, it's almost impossible to twist that that pipe nipple once the once this fitting is screwed down in there. Now, one thing I am going to do on this, um, I'll show you. There's a, there's just a little little flare right there. So when I get a little bit further along in the process, I plan to cut this off, grind it down really nice flat, and uh, and I'll, I'll I'll get to that in a minute. What what the purpose of that's going to be? So we have propane in. Uh, Good pressure valve, okay, it's going to feed both of these, and th this will be finished up the same way as this side with, uh, with, a, with a MIG tip in there pointing down the bore. These are inch and a half to three quarter inch uh, reducing 
and it's just uh, galvanized. You could go with black pipe if you could find them. Um, uh, no pressure here, uh, no heat, so uh, the galvanized really uh, isn't going to be a problem. And then uh, when I get a little bit further along, I'll take some carbide burrs, and I plan to just grind all this down smooth, polish it out, just make it look nice, uh, just for the hell of it. Okay, so we got both of those coming down into a three quarter inch by six inch long pipe nipple. Um, the reason I went six inch, I, I was burning this with an eight inch pipe nipple on here and dropping down to a six inch. Actually, um, um, I, I, I got a nicer flame out of it. So no real reason behind it, no, nothing scientific. Uh, uh, other than when I switched over to a six inch pipe nipple, uh, I got a beautiful flame on there, which brings us down to the three quarter to one, or is this label one to three quarter inch stainless steel bell reducer. Okay. And this acts as, as your flare end. Um, the stainless steel will with, withstand the heat last for years. And then, uh, one additional thing I did on this, and you can see in there, I talk, took a carbide burr and just ground out the uh, the threads on this end. And uh, I've run this down to less than one PSI, and it's just a beautiful, uh, uh, stable flame that comes out of there. So uh, so that's, that's the way I go that way. Now, um, one other thing, I, I, as I mentioned... I will be I'll, I'll be cutting this off somewhere in here following this line and grinding it down smooth so I have a nice flat surface there and the reason for that is um, I'll probably end up using all thread uh, but what will happen is is on the opposite side of that of that uh, uh, MIG tip I'll tack weld uh, probably all thread on there and that'll extend out through this through this extension piece here and the reason for that is that I'll have a round choke that'll be tapped uh, to the one quarter 20 thread and that'll go on there and then as you're burning you could just flick it with your finger close that down choke it down to go from a reducing flame to an oxidizing flame and you can just dial that dial that flame in uh, exactly the way you want it so that's how that'll go so uh, these are about two bucks. Uh, the bells, uh, inch and a half to three quarters. Locally here in Washington State, they run about five eighty-five a piece um, for something for the uh, for the pipe nipples. So it's all fairly inexpensive. I think the, mo the most expensive part of this whole thing is a little needle valve, um, and the quick disconnect is just uh, a bit, you know I just want to go that way. You could obviously just run your hard line straight into that and, and just run it. Um, and I also have a, uh, um, uh, the regulator on the tank to, to, uh, uh, control the, uh, the pressure. And the one that I have goes all the way from, from not all the way up to, uh, uh, it's rated at 60 PSI. I, I've, I've run this burner up to about 35 PSI and boy, does it, it, it just puts out just this beautiful flame. So, um, so that's pretty much it. Um, fairly simple. It doesn't take a, a whole lot of specialty tools unless you want to do something, uh, you know, just to, to fancy it up a little bit. But this is all just off the shelf stuff at Home Depot other than uh, the valve. Uh, the quick disconnect, I, I think, was Amazon. This was eBay. And, uh, and this reducer was, I believe, uh, Amazon as well. They, they come from, from China. Um, I've heard people say they're very hard to find and very expensive. But if you go the, the uh, Amazon route, you know, you could pick these up for five, six bucks a piece. And they're stainless steel, so they'll last much, much longer than black pipe. Don't use galvanized hair. Uh, galvanized is not a problem here. Galvanized hair, uh, once you get up to temperature, it will melt that zinc, put it in the air, and you don't want to be breathing any kind of uh, zinc fumes. Uh, it's very bad for you. Um, so th there's a good shot of the of the size there, inch and a half to three quarters. And uh, that's cross-drilled for, uh, 
for the quarter inch. So there's a just a quick and dirty overview of the of the uh, of the double double burner uh, setup that I'm working on. Sorry for the shaky video. Uh, once I get this together and up and running, um, I'll post some video of it put together and uh, and fire it up and and uh, give a look see at it. Uh, one one thing that I'll probably end up doing. Um, this will be my front burner. This one will be towards the back of the forge a little bit. I'll probably add a little ball valve in here just to be able to turn one of these off. Obviously, I, I thought about putting one on either side, but uh, I mean, you're obviously going to, if you're lighting the forge, you're going to always have one lit. So that'll always be the front one. If I decide to turn turn anything off, it'll be either completely off or, or just one of the burners I'll turn off. So I'll, I'll just put in a little ball valve right there to be able to just isolate that that one burner if I want to do something lower temperature or just have have that front burner going. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Stay tuned. Um, I'll uh, I'll post more as I get further along in the process here. I uh, just brought home a a um, a mill that I'm working on as well at the same time as the forge, so uh, it's just a matter of priorities and, and uh, setting aside the time to get this done. But uh, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll have this put together and operational. And, uh, and uh, then I'll, I'll uh, also get into some of the stuff with the forge. There's a couple of buckets of 3,300 or 3,200 degree um, mortar. Uh, there's my uh, K23 bricks. Uh, those are 2.5 by 4.5 by 9. And uh, that's uh, that's going to be uh, lining the forge, and then also over here, a roll of kale wool. So um, I'll get into um, into uh, the design of the forge that I that I have going through my head um, in a future video. So there it is, double double forge burner uh, in the works, and uh, stay tuned and. And uh, and we'll get this thing fired up. Thanks for watching.